What can you tell me and listeners about the biggest issue you see facing the city? Certainly. The biggest issue I see from my perspective is leadership, leadership from the mayor's chair. And I'm going to back up a second. I'll tell you sort of that moment when I cross over to say I'm running for mayor, the, the, the moment. And it just put into very clear perspective why this city is missing leadership right now. Back in December, it was New Year's Eve, there was a gentleman who, who froze to death at a bus stop. We were near a bus stop in East Regina. And at the time, you know, this was New Year's Eve. And then I remember a couple of days later, one of the local businesses came out with their security footage and said, you know, we'd watched this man perish for seven hours. And, you know, it's a really horrible situation. I have no idea who he was or what his background was or how he ended up there. And I, and I wasn't mad at the citizens who drove by or, you know, the bus driver, you know. We can figure that out. What really turned it for me was there was crickets. There was no nothing from the city of Regina until maybe about a week after. And at that time, it was all about, well, we'll look at our transit policies. And I thought, that's not right. Because if I had been mayor, first thing I would have said is, is this the city we're becoming or is this where we're, this is what we have become? Somebody, one of our own, somebody's son is on, is perishing in, in our winters. And it just drove home to me that we were missing compassion in our city. And it, this is not a homelessness issue. Or I don't even know if the person was, what, what their situation was. It's about one of our own was in distress and we ignored it. So we need to just take a pause and say, is that who we've become or where we're headed? So with that, with that sort of epiphany moment, I said, that's it, I'm in. And I started to frame it up. It's really about leadership, being able to lead our council in a way that has informed you know, database decisions, data not just on, on statistics, but anecdotal and, and really thoughtful conversations that respect each other and we, and we don't get locked in my camp versus your camp and because you think this way, I can't talk to you about anything else on any other issue. And so when it's all said and done, it's leadership. And when we get the leadership right, everything else is easier. Not easy, just easier. So what would you do to be a better leader outside of that one circumstance where you would have expressed compassion for the person. Right. So as a mayor, the, le- the the mayor is what we would, you know, is, is the orchestral leader, the leader of the orchestra, captain of the team. It's not an ego thing. It's, it's just the way we go. And it, that position has quite a significant amount of influence. It's not, it's not like the power per se. That's not it. This is, we don't live in a dictatorship in this city. Right, right just so, one vote for the Right, mayor. right. It's one vote. And, and so the way we do this is we work with the councillors, whoever gets elected, and that's the team. And we can't just say, well, they, they're... they're Yahoos or whatever, whatever people say about sometimes counselors, that's not fair because the, the mayor then has to work with that team and it's almost like coaching and say, what, where, what are we missing? You know, I don't know everything. I have lots to learn. Counselors have lots to learn and understand what does it mean to be a counselor? How do you put city decisions first ahead of our wards? Yes, be champions for your ward. Ultimately though, we're there for the city. So we, we start to do things by understanding, learning how to ask questions. So for example, when, when uh, delegations come to council chambers, we should not be asking yes, no questions. That gets us nowhere. We should be, you know, I, I, there's an expression called get curious, not furious. You know, we should be exploring these, these conversations and teaching counselors and, and, you know, de facto also then the mayor as well. We, we should learn to be good listeners and actually understanding and respect each other in this community. And there's a whole variety of different tactics you can do. And I don't know if this, is this helping explain, you know, what, what your question was? Does this help? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and so really it it comes back to leading that team and giving them the skills necessary, whatever skills they come in with and augmenting them with better skills because people expect us to be good leaders. It's a big responsibility to lead a city. This is not a, a, you know, a a backyard club that we were kids and we're going to have a little organization. This is serious. There's serious issues. And it's also a lot of fun. There's the good things that happen in our city. It's just that we need to know how to do the job. We get that right. Off we go. What is the key to a safe and vibrant downtown? The key is people. It, it, people being comfortable going down there, volumes of people. When we have large volumes of people, whether they're going down, we've increased the, the food options, the evening, the, 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 the dinners, if you will, the lunches, the, the entertainment, the, the um, almost anything, the number of business people, the students, have, have we got student campuses set up? Or like, how are we bringing by? It's people. We have got to have people coming down. Now, to do that, it has to go piece by piece by piece. And it's going to take, this is where leadership comes in, is that we have to help people understand we've all got to be a little bit of flexible, a little, little bit flexible here. We've got to be willing to say, okay, I'm prepared to give a little bit on this in order for something that's better down the road because it's not going to happen overnight. You know, we're talking three to five years before downtown is, you know, really 
like, wow, like, you know, we'll forgotten about the past, ideally. Right? So what would you start to do to make it more vibrant? Sure. I would start to engage with those that have the experience in entrepreneurship and restaurants and say, what's it going to take? Like, really, you're, you're the ones who make this happen. What's it going to, because I don't know. And I, I would never ever pretend to know because I don't live in that space. You know, you know, so I draw upon my experience in leading other organizations when you're trying to solve it. You have to bring the players, the, the, the people involved. I'd be talking to uh, maybe our university, Sask Polytech Technique, and saying, what are the options? possibilities of having something downtown, some of your programs downtown. Can we do something downtown? Talking to the, the, the folks that have property downtown and say, all right, so if you have a parking lot now, you know, because I know we have a lot of parking lots downtown. Do. And it, so the question is, so what would it take to change that parking lot? Like, like, let's be honest, like really, what would it take? And, you know, here's the bigger picture. We're all trying to do our little piece of it. You as a, a property owner with a parking lot, you're part of this solution. You know, you, and if you can say, well, I'm just going to wait until the price goes up so I can sell it. Okay, well, at least we know, but then we have something to start with and we can start talking about it. Um, and engaging citizens in this conversation that have not been part of the conversation so far, because, you know, I haven't talked to all 230,000 people in the city so far. I've talked to a lot of people and there are a lot of really good ideas and because it's easy to have ideas and it's, it's more difficult to execute those ideas and then to stick with them to make it work. It's just that if we think sometimes when we try to solve like a downtown issue, we involve everybody who's connected to downtown directly right now. Well, we've been trying that. And everybody's going to give them some good effort, right? So there's, it hasn't worked. We seem to be slipping a bit in some, in some instances. So then let's get more people involved and have proper engagement where we actually do listen and are not afraid of what we're going to hear. Because sometimes when you ask a question, you're going to hear things that are like, oh, that makes me a little uncomfortable. But that's okay. We have to be comfortable with that. We did hear that people wanted pedestrian mall on Scarth Street. What do you think about traffic cars on Scarth? <laughs> You know what? I, here's what I'm going to ask. I will answer that question directly, and I'm going to preface it by saying, as the mayor, I'm hoping citizens evaluate my performance and, and potential. In this case, potential and my performance based on my ability to create an environment where we make informed decisions that are rational and make good sense. So, changing our process, how we look at decisions, because at the end of the day, or at the start of the day, however you want to phrase it. You know, my view is important because you look at to me for my values, my beliefs. Is that someone I can trust? my specific views on certain issues, I'm one vote. So, so with that all said, that kind of preface, I think Scar Street Mall is a place for people. And then we have to figure out how, to, and I understand like there's, there's two sides to it, right? So we have to unpack it a lot more. Ultimately though, if we're gonna have a downtown that really bustles and people wanna go to, you wanna feel comfortable walking around. And walking around, is not just on sidewalks, you can do it on large, and we'll, we'll figure that out. And I, uh, I'm a big fan of having people downtown and, and if it makes changes how we deal with cars, Let's figure that out because there's, there's a lot of other space in town. How, how can we do this and, and make it work for the majority of the people? We've also heard about big projects through the Catalyst Committee, including perhaps an arena downtown, a baseball st stadium downtown, new central library location downtown. What will you do to pay for what we need in the city? Big projects, road repair, and not charge people too much. <laughs> There's the magic of civic politics right there. First thing we're going to do, we're going to pump the brakes and we're going to slow down because right now the impression is and what people are feeling, and, and it's, it's a heat that we're feeling as citizens, it's all coming at us at once. And we're going, well, where are we going? How are we going to do this? And it's, uh, there, maybe there's a plan somewhere. The fact is, because of leadership, we haven't shared that. We haven't had people buy in and, and embrace whatever this plan might be. It's like it's not there. And so we like have, the Catalyst Committee plan isn't there. It's not there. And I say it's not there. There might be a document. The plan has not been embraced by our citizens. So so we can create some. But if it's not owned by the people that it benefits, then it might as well be. Like it, it's not, it doesn't really matter because if people aren't going to support it, then what's the point of having it? So we have to go back, slow down and find a way to engage people in this process and all these projects, you know, whichever ones are most needed now, then we start, but it's going to take us 10, 12 years, maybe 15 to get some of these in place because we simply can't do them all at once. And so the trick is backing up, like I said, pumping the brakes, slowing down and giving people comfort with, because everyone, you know, when I talk to people, they say, yes, we, we do know we need, we need a new pool and we got to fix our infrastructure, infrastructure. And nobody's questioning those things so much. They're saying it's the speed at which we're doing and how are we going to pay for it? So it's, we're going to slow it down and stretch it out and actually communicate a plan with our citizens. That's what's missing. What would you pump the brakes on? 
I think trying to get everything up and running right now, we see, it feel, I say everything, right? So that's, that's not, maybe not a fair statement, right? Uh, we're, we're hearing about a pool. I think the pool needs to move forward. You know, maybe we look at a little bit what's going on on the inside in terms of is it the right design, you know, without slowing it down too much. I mean, it's been going for a while and I see the demand for swimming lessons and our population is only going to grow and the loss is not going to hang in there. I mean, I, I swim there all, you know, five times a week. So I, I see it and, you know, the water's great, you know, underneath the water, it's probably not doing so well, right? And then, but let's start talking about what what else has to happen. Is it is it library? Is it arena? Is it is it baseball stadium? And just start to really, and again, I wish I had a, a crystal ball to tell you, this is the order that I would do it in, because I don't know that. And um, we need to understand what is most affordable and how do we spread this out over the next 10, 12 years. Why should people vote for you, Bill Pratt? Thank you for asking that question. Here's what I say. You know, I ask voters to be inspired to vote. Listen to all the candidates and decide who inspires you to go to the voter box. Now, if that inspire is anger towards somebody who's already, you know, who, who you don't like, fine, go, go, go to it. More specifically, if I look at my background, been leading organizations, uh, have, have worked for charities, you know, pretty much my whole career. Um, and, I, and I've also been a volunteer, sit on, sat on different boards of directors, been a hands-on, on the ground volunteer. I understand community building. I understand integrity. I understand leading with, you know, with positivity and hope. Not that it's all, oh, it's, it's going to be a great day, you know. It's, it's understanding the difference between hope and just wishing and knowing that when you look at things with a balanced view and try to understand, we'll move forward. So the reason to vote for me? I believe I'm the guy that can inspire a better Regina and people, I want people to look at me as someone, okay, I trust you. I mean, we're going to have to build back that trust. I and mean, there's a big gap there, right? I want them to be able to trust me so that when something goes south in this city and it's a, it's a bad situation, they'll go, all right, Bill's, Bill's at the helm. We're going to be okay. We'll figure this out. And they don't have to worry about it. Wednesday night uh, television broadcasts. The number one show should not be our city council meetings. It, it, people watch it for the drama. And I'm hoping they see me as somebody who's, who's steady, who's diplomatic, who lifts people up as opposed to puts people down and can inspire a better Regina and let us do what we need, what we do so well and do more of it. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. And congratulations for doing this with all candidates. It's important work. 